Hello everyone, and I hope you're well. This is an introductory episode to using an Arduino microcontroller platform with CB radios to make a Roger bleep. A Roger bleep, of course, is the bleep that happens when you unkey on the on the radio. It indicates the end of your transmission. Now, for those that don't know the Arduino, there is several Arduinos. It's Arduino is basically a platform which covers small microcontrollers on a small development board um, and that's that runs under an IDE, the Integrated Development and Environment, which in which you can develop code, which runs basically across all of the, the models as uh, various different models of different levels and complexity and price. But this is the very basic one, this is the nano tiny little thing. Uh, and then with a uh, with an Arduino you have uh, what are called shields which the, which the Arduino plugs into and gives you some breakout pins. This one here is for driving servos and basically it takes these pins here from the back of the Arduino and presents them to you there and gives you extra grounds and power rails to power things so that just makes it easier to hook up rather than doing everything on the back there. It pops in there and that, I don't know if you really call that strictly a shield but that's kind of the idea of a shield uh, and the, uh, the nano will plug in to a breadboard like that just like a large IC and that will break it out there if you want to do it that way uh, uh, another type of Arduino is, is this one which is uh, the UNO now the UNO as you can see is slightly larger again it takes its power and you can program through the micro USB port there. You can also power it through the uh, the barrel jack. And there's your processor, fairly small processor, but a different processor to that. Uh, it's slightly more powerful. It gives you more ins and outs, and you can do just do just a bit more with that. And again, um, the Uno has shields. This is a shield for the Uno. It'll only go on one way, it's all keyed up. So the UNO shield goes onto the UNO, like that. Push it in, and then you've got all these breakout pins here. Uh, 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 another shield for the UNO is this one here. That's uh, a motor control board, I believe. Yes, it even says so. So uh, it breaks out from the UNO, which is placed underneath. And gives you uh, terminal blocks that you can connect motors to. The uh, Unos themselves will drive about, drive about 50 milliamps, so that's fairly reasonable. That's enough for doing an LED. It's not really enough for doing a relay, and certainly not enough for a motor. So you need to buffer them, introduce more power, and the lower signals power the motors via these chips. So that's them. And then you go up to uh, one of the big boys. This is called the Mega, Mega 2560, which as you see is a quite a large processor on there. That's one of the most powerful ones at the moment in the Arduino range. Um, this one was, I don't you probably not see it in the, in the sunlight there, but I'll give it a twirl, let's see, on the evil block. Uh, this is, obviously that's a USB charge pack, and we'll pop that in there to power it up. And you'll see the effect if I can get it in. And power that up there. There we go. You may not see that in the light. But I've done a night rider type effect on there. Um, the reason I've used the Mega for this project is because it's got lots of pins. It's got loads of PWM pins. You notice that the, the lights as they progress are actually start bright and they gradually dim. Well, that's done with pulse width modulation. Um, as per the Knight Rider effect uh, and you need all of these you know you need that many pins that are actually true P PWM pulse width modulation in order to do that so that's the big guns there um, it's obviously one of the more expensive boards and you really don't need anything more than the Nano for making simple bloops with a, with a CB radio Nothing more than that. It's as simple as that, and these only cost a couple of bucks, which is lovely, of course. We like cheap. But 
where I'm going to go with this particular project, I'm going to do something about this sort of size, just because, well, it's fairly handy, it's a nice development platform, but we can easily scale it down, hopefully at the end of the series, to the nano and make it all work on that. That's probably plenty enough oomph in those, as you can see. If we can make it small enough, that'll easily fit inside a CB radio. However, what I'm aiming to do with this project is have your CB here. And have a box that contains the Arduino. And then you're going to plug your microphone into the box. So basically you can just use an ordinary, ordinary microphone, plug that into the Arduino, and plug that into the CB. Now, earlier CBs uh, don't have any power coming out of the mic socket. Later ones do. So it's quite possible you've got an 8 volts or whatever coming out of your radio that can then power the Arduino. Otherwise you can just use a USB from the computer. You could even put batteries in, it's not using a hell of a lot of power. So that's a big 10 for. Um, the thing with CBs is they're a bit unusual. The older CBs, and we're going back to the older CBs, uh, you look, you notice in a microphone, inside the microphone, the wiring of the microphone will have actually a changeover switch. And why that is is because you've got inside your CB, this is your CB, you've got a transmitter and you've got a, a receiver in there. Now you don't want the receiver to be running when the transmitter is running because otherwise it's just you're just going to get howl back. The receiver will be picking up the same signal that the transmitter is transmitting. Although in fact the, the synth frequency could be different. But anyway, you don't want that receiver running when, the, when it's transmitting, and obviously you don't want it transmitting when it's receiving. So both of these are connected to the uh, to the voltage rail, and how they're switched between the two, they're really unsophisticated we say the earlier ones and all they did is they, they ran the, the power through the microphone this is your microphone here and they had a two-way switch and we're in receive there and then that would go to ground so the the, the PTT switch on your microphone is actually switching the whole power circuits for the receiver and transmit on the CB which is um, crude but effective. Nowadays that's not done like that because everything's uh, logic driven in a modern radio so you'll find that it uh, it uh, just has a, a single pin which will probably run at TTL levels to drive and to transmit. But so that what I'm getting to here is the Arduino um, wouldn't be natively um, uh, capable of, of running a CB like that. I mean you could but it's messy. Um, and so the best thing to do is to have in here a relay. A relay is a switch which is controlled by a coil. So basically it isolates it electrically completely from the transmit and receive circuits and allows you to, uh, to drive the radio. No problems at all. So here I've got a built, jumping ahead now, now this is a built uh, prototype of a Roger Bleep. And you can see you've got the Arduino Uno there with its USB, its power. And you've got uh, another shield on top. This particular type of shield is just a, 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 a prototyping shield. It's basically um, bringing the, all the pins through up to there, straight through, and replicating them on these. And it gives you just a development area in the middle that you can put your own components on. I've fitted a relay there to do this function inside the Arduino. And these are the pins for the for the uh, contacts of the relay. The relay is driven. I hope you can see this. It's not the best lighting here due to the time of day. But just there is a is a um, an NPN transistor, which is used to drive the relay. Remember, I mentioned that the outputs of the Arduino aren't powerful enough to drive a relay. That's uh, sort of a 40, 50 milliamps max that you're going to get from these, and that's possibly just a little bit more. Also you get a nasty spike out of a relay, so that's actually got a, uh, a diode underneath which you can't see. Just check my time. Oh, one minute. Okay, I've got one minute. To do it. 
demonstrate this working. So we'll get the uh, power from there, and, and this is what we're aiming at here. Uh, this I've set up with, with uh, a system called Cell Call, which is a selective calling thing used in PMR radio, but it, it sounds quite musical and quite nice and interesting. Uh, recorder on there. Uh, this switch is assigned to starting the sequence. You might be able to hear the relay clicking over as it plays that sequence. I've taken this away and zapped it with uh, with some new code now, um, which I've uh, which I've written uh, just zapped it to it. It's exactly the same hardware, just with a different code which is held in the microcontroller underneath there. Uh, so it's got a completely new identity now. Uh, yes, of course it's the Lincolnshire Poacher, which is just obviously a series of tones. Uh, from a library which uh, has all the the, the uh, frequencies of the uh, regular uh, scale and just plays one in sequence after another with a, uh, a length assigned to each tone and a small pause between the notes. Now after this is done it's going to be built up we're going to um, treat it to a nice case because oh, that's a bit sort of shabby having that knocking around your shack of course it's liable to short out and things. So I'm going to pop everything here into a case and a little nosy around, as a little bit of a scout around and I found this rather lovely relic from when they used to build things. Things used to cost a lot more but they were obviously built a lot better before the eternal race to the bottom. That's an old SCSI hard drive case which I've had for far too long and not actually done anything with. So. That's going to just sit in there, avoid the cardboard box, uh, have a, uh, a USB socket on the back and a mic socket on the front and maybe a switch or two to enable and disable the Roger Bleep. If I write the right software for it, I can select it to do different types of Roger Bleep, which is a cold name there. Uh, but that seems to have a VCD switch on the back, which can be used perhaps as a program. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that introductory episode two, mucking about with Arduinos, all in the interest of science. Catch you later. A wireless enthusiast wanted friendship, and a wireless enthusiast wanted friendship, and a wireless enthusiast wanted friendship, and came out. You